right, so we're back. Another week of couch talks, some different faces this week. Um, so I just want to go around a little bit for those of you those of you, I'm looking in the camera. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who's sitting on this couch right now, um, we have Lindsay. Hey guys. Um, so Lindsay, you are one of our student ministry interns. I am. Uh, you're crushing the game. You are a seventh grade girl leader. Yes, girl yes, so leader. Shout out to seventh grade uh, girls. Those are my girls, yeah. <laughs> what a bunch. <laughs> and I, Lindsay, I was trying to think about when the first time I met you was, and I can't yeah, remember. <laughs> Steph, I'm going to tell you this really okay. quickly. When you first came into Scotts Hill and you were like on the team and you would like hang out with a few people here and there around the church, this is when you didn't have a lot of friends. Yeah, um, that's true. When okay. you first came in. Um, <laughs> I genuinely did not think you liked me at all. Maybe it was just the vibes of like Wisconsin, but I was like, I don't think she likes me. <laughs> but then once we like had lunch that one day, it broke it. And yeah. I was like, we're besties. Yeah. Your mom. No, that's, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people have that perception, like, they're like, ooh, this Wisconsin vibe, <laughs> and I think, it, like, a lot of people, it comes off as like, oh, she really doesn't like, like, actually, what it is, I have major social anxiety, <laughs> and so I'm always, like, trying to, like, act like I'm cool, and my like, nose ring, and then, like, <laughs> I'm actually inside, like, dying, <laughs> so that's probably what I mean, you were feeling, right, but yeah, that's all I needed, and there it was, yes. all right. So that's Lindsay. And then we have Rachel. <laughs> Did you have the same experience? Rachel, you're a kids ministry intern. Yeah. Um, definitely tried to snag you for student ministry, but I saw your calling was elsewhere. So now that's where you're at. But you're still a sixth grade small group leader. Yeah. Um, okay. Have you been enjoying that? Yeah, I love it. Those sixth graders. Okay. They're I guess crazy. <laughs> they keep me on my toes, but um, we're on camera, so I guess you could really say <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I literally love them but, so much. Yeah, they're a good bunch. They're, they're a good great. bunch. Both of your bunches. Both yeah. of our bunches. This is great. Um, and Rachel, you're another one too where I just like, I, I feel like remember not knowing you. Because I feel like with you, it was more of like, I hung out with Summer and like you would come along yeah. or like I, you guys would hang out and I, I would just come hang out with you guys. So it wasn't like a moment where it was like, oh, hey, I'm Steph. Hey, I'm Rachel. <laughs> I think it was just like a, we just started hanging out and we just knew right, each other and then it was like, yeah. Sparks blue, awesome. sparks yeah. blue, and now a lot of movie nights later, here we are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and late nights here, saying we're gonna work out, and then not working and then out, not working ending out. up just talking for a while. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a bad. But <clears throat> anyway, so those are our two guests. I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Stephanie. I just kind of assume, you know, people know me now. But okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> Stephanie will work here. Nice to meet all of you. Okay, so <laughs> today. Uh, I'm excited because we're obviously continuing this conversation about faith and our faith journey, but today I really want to hit a little bit more on this like misconception I think I've heard a lot in the student ministry. Like we a lot of the times are like pushing students to like give your transformation story, give your transformation story. And so many students are like, well, I don't really have a story or I don't have a moment because I grew up in a Christian household and there just wasn't like there wasn't this specific day and time where I came to know Jesus. Like, it's just yeah. been this thing. And I think there's also, like, a lot of confusion from these students of, like, I've grown up in a Christian household my whole life, and I know all the answers, but do I, am I actually saved? Like, mm -hmm. So I really want to kind of hit on this thing. I'm really excited for this conversation because I think all three of us have really different yeah. backgrounds and, and kind of growing up in Christian homes or not Christian homes or half Christian homes or, you know, all this. So we're hopefully going to hit all the bases. So... I just wanted to start out, and anybody can jump in first, of like, what kind of home life did you grow in? Did you grow up in a Christian home or not, and what did that look like? Yeah, I can go ahead and start. I um, grew up in a home where, for the first eight years of my life, both of my parents kind of took us to church every now and then. It wasn't an everyday thing, but it was obviously we talked about God in our household, um, but I didn't fully know a whole bunch about it, and then... When I was eight, my parents got divorced, and it was kind of the end of, like, me going to church in one, at one time, because my dad would take us to church, um, but my mom didn't really focus in on taking us to church, and so it was kind of just this split relationship that I had with God. I was like, okay, every other Sunday I'm going to be in a relationship with God, so it was definitely very different for me as far as, like, having a relationship with God because of that week-on, week-off kind of aspect. So, sure, sure. Yeah. So did you kind of like feel like your faith was kind of followed that too? Like, oh, I'm a Christian on um, this weekend, yeah, yeah, yeah. not this weekend. Because I kind of feel like I set my friends too, like, in 
at my mom's house, for the most part, some of my friends were not the best people, but then at my dad's house, I noticed that my friends were like, oh, okay, like, I could bring them over to my dad's house, and he would approve of them sort of thing, um, because they followed in that path, but eventually I kind of learned how to merge it together and be like, okay, um, I shouldn't be living two separate lives, <laughs> basically, so, right. yeah. Right. So, kind of have these. Have you're these. our havesies growing up have in a Christian these. home. Yes. <laughs> not growing up in a Christian home. Rachel, your story is a little bit different. Yeah, it's very different. Um, I grew up from when I was born. I went to preschool here. Grew up going to church every Sunday. We would come to church on Wednesday nights, like always at church. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, I grew up like knowing all the answers to all those questions and like the Jesus answers and like I knew everything. But like. It was just something we did. I don't think I realized how important church was and how much like it meant to go to church. I was like, oh, we're just going going to a place again. Like it wasn't really like that thing where I was like, yes, I'm in a relationship with God. We are doing this. It was more of just like, oh, we're going to hang out with my friends on Sunday morning, or we're going to do word searches, and we're going to like have fun. Um, and so I grew up knowing everything, and that is where it set me to like where I am now. Yeah. And then, I mean, for me, I, like, I'm pretty sure my parents tried to take me to a church once, but I just remember, like, my dad used to swear at the weatherman a lot, and so I had this, like, um, colorful vocabulary, and the one time my parents tried to take me to church, I, like, swore out loud in the middle of, like, a prayer because the weather wasn't correct outside. That the, <laughs> I just, like, copied my dad, and I got soap in my mouth, and so I literally had a bad taste about church in my mouth, and, like, that was all... <laughs> remember wow. and so I like didn't have this concept of like church or the fact that people did that or that was like a thing or a community until like I was in middle school so like it's cool that we have all of these is that cool today it's open yeah. <laughs> like it's cool that we have all these you know like different kind of backgrounds so we've established this all kind of coming from different angles but for every believer we have this moment where we realize like we're following Jesus like this faith thing is our own and we're deciding to do this and it's changed our lives in some way like the gospels changed our lives uh, personally and deeply and so we're going to follow that and so coming from all different backgrounds Rachel I kind of want to start with you on this one like was there a moment where you're like I'm a Christian now yeah. or like was it this kind of longer process and, and when did you realize like this is this is legit like I'm following this and this is real and I believe that this is true mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like I said, I grew up in a Christian home, and then when I was eight, my dad passed away, and so, like, I think after that moment, I, like, realized that, like, yeah, I wasn't saved, like, I wasn't really following Jesus, because I was, after that moment, I was just, like, angry, and, like, I didn't understand why, and, like, it just kind of basically spiraled my life for a little bit for a while there, um, and then that just, like, kind of shifted my view of God of like because growing up in a Christian in, in a Christian home and like everything was like all of the good aspects of God of like like just focusing on like how loving he is mm -hmm. and then after that moment I was like how can a loving God like take my dad away at such a young age um and so that moment was like oh shoot mm -mm. I don't want this I don't like this but obviously still went to church because my mom was like that's what we're doing we're going to church as a family and so we would go um, and then I think it wasn't till middle school, because it wasn't like a moment where I was like, yeah, this is the day, this is the exact hour, this is the exact night that I was saved. It was, like you said, it's more of a long-term process of like realizing that, yeah, I'm a sinner. And probably in middle school where was where I was like, yeah, I am need to live my life for Christ because he has a purpose for everything because over that span from eight, from when I was eight to middle school, I was realizing he had a plan for, t for my dad passing away. There was a plan for it. There was a purpose. And it has made me who I am. And so realizing that really is what shot my faith into like, yes, I need to live my life for Christ and grow and learn more about him and be the person that he made me to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. So it, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't this direct moment, like, you, you grew up in this Christian household, and then your life kind of fell apart a little bit, there was this major event that caused you to question God, which I think, um, Garrett kind of talked about yeah. last week, where he started asking these questions, 
And it's when you started asking those questions that it's almost like you start claiming your faith mm -hmm. for your own. And that was a process like from eight years old. And then all of a sudden you're in middle school. I'm sure you're, you're dealing with anger and frustration and these questions. And like, am I saved? Am I not? Is Jesus who he says he is? Mm -hmm. And then one day you're like, I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's not a day. Maybe it's the course of like several days, weeks, yeah. years that finally you're like, yeah. Um, and I think that's so cool because like the process is still so valid like it doesn't have to be this one day and then like I'm safe now yeah. like the fact that it took you multiple years of asking questions and trying to navigate this terrain like that's still so valid yeah. and such a part of the story that God has you know because yeah, that's like why I wouldn't really like people would say like hey what's your transformation story I would be like um I mean like I don't really have a great one like I mean I grew up so I know everything and so I think realizing that like no everybody has a transformation story if you are saved and all of them are valid even yeah. if you have like even if you did just grow up in a christian home nothing really bad happened to you like god still took you from being a sinner and you're still a sinner but like he took you from like being dead in your sin to like being alive in christ and like just that in itself is incredible yeah and so i think that's great for students to know to be like even if you don't have this awful like childhood of like mm -hmm. bad things happen like your transformation story is still incredible because he took your your dead and your sin to being alive in Christ yeah. and that's incredible yeah absolutely and we yeah and we all do have to have that moment where we realize that and accept that um for ourselves mm -hmm. and that's you know, what salvation is um now Lindsay you've had a little bit of a different story so like when was that moment for you where you're like yeah it's I crazy to hear that she it took her a while because like, for me, it didn't, it wasn't, like, this long, drawn-out process of me um, kind of sitting and thinking through every single thing. Um, it was really just after having, it. I did have a hard part in my childhood where I was like, oh, I'm mad at God, like, I'm angry and I'm frustrated and I don't have all the answers to the questions. But there was one night where I realized that I don't have to have all the answers to the questions before I can be saved. Um, and it was, I really was just like, wow, I am in desperate need of a savior. And it was one night where I was just like, it was like the moment in the stereotypical moment, I feel like, where you're just like, oh, I was at church camp and I did this. It was a youth group night and I came and it was a normal night for everyone else, but I came and I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit there. And I think it's really cool because a lot of the times we try and like take the value of, out of our own testimony because we're like, no, I just heard so-and-so say that they came and, like, really had goosebumps, and I didn't get goosebumps, and it's okay to not have those moments, um, because it's your story, and I think that's what makes it so important, and so on that night when I was there, it was just me and God, it wasn't about anyone else around me who wasn't feeling goosebumps, it was about me yeah. in that moment with God, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, so, I think this is so important to kind of hit on this, I think a lot of students and like I know even growing up I even still now I get confused with this but there's definitely this emotional part to faith where and especially you know you're at do you know you're, oh, you're at these camps and the lighting is sick <laughs> and, and like the worship team is crushing it and the speakers getting you all in your fields and you're there with your friends and your youth leaders and like you do kind of get swept up in the emotion of it um, which is totally fine. Like God's created us with these emotions and we're supposed to kind of experience him in this intimate way. And yet there's like seasons in our faith life where we don't feel that like emotion, that connection. I think sometimes we get confused and we say, well, if there's no, like, if I'm not in this mountaintop high of emotion, then like my faith is wrong or, or something's really like saved? off or am yeah, I really yeah. saved? Um, and so you kind of, even when you were just talking now, made this differentiation of like, yeah, I was feeling the, the emotions of that, and I was feeling pulled towards that, but it wasn't because of the people around me or the things going on around me. Like, I knew in mm -hmm. that moment. So, like, how are you able, this might be a difficult question, how are you able to differentiate between those two things? I think, because um, I, I have been going to a youth group for so long, and I knew that feeling of, like, wow, everyone's singing, like, this is beautiful, we're all singing together. Um, but it was just a feeling unlike those ones. Like, mm -hmm. it was just something that I had never experienced before, and I knew that it just, it was a pull at my heart more than anything, because the other times, it was definitely a pull at my emotions of, like, okay, wow, everyone in here is singing, I'm going to sing along with them, and I'm going to do these things. Um, but I felt myself wanting to do it more than me wanting to do it with everyone else sort of yeah. thing. So, just that. Yeah, no, it's kind of like, it's this click where it's,
it's not just your emotion, but it's like your head and your heart and yeah. like the Holy Spirit yeah. kind of clicking together yeah. and you're like, whoa, yeah. the gospel. <laughs> like you have this you're like, exactly. this is real. Yeah. And I remember that, like for me, like I too was, I you know, went to a church camp. Like my story was a little different. I like kind of was exposed to church, but never really went to church. Like any of my church experience growing up was like being forced to go to this like Lutheran crazy place like I just <laughs> nothing against Lutherans but like it was it was a hard environment to be in um and I had this really negative perception of the church and then even me going to youth group was kind of like I was forced to be there and so I didn't listen I didn't know the answers to the bible stories I jokingly assumed that if I needed to answer a question I could say Jesus Moses or the bible and that was going to work out for me like I just knew that I was being forced to be there yeah. And it wasn't until I went to this this church camp and had an until we had an entire week with like 600 middle schoolers. It was insane. I can't believe they did that. But uh, <laughs> we had this entire week, and it was like the last night of the camp where like our youth pastor. It, for me, it wasn't this worship. It wasn't like the light your candle if you feel like you're accepting the gospel. It like wasn't any of these. It's when our specific youth group went back to this um, small conference room. And our youth pastor specifically, like, shared the gospel with us in this really intimate setting. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, in that moment that I was, like, oh, my gosh, there, there's a God. He exists, and he loves me for some reason. Yeah. I have to follow this God. Yeah. Like, I have to be a part of this. And so it was, it was once again, like, that clicking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's so important for our students to hear because I think, like, we do. We create these emotional settings yeah. on a Wednesday night, on a Sunday morning sometimes, which is not a bad thing. But I think it doesn't I, have to be that way. It doesn't yeah. have to be that way. And I think especially some of our students are, you know, God's created us all in kind of unique ways. Mm -hmm. And so some of our students are a little bit more intellectual. And I could see how, like, a more intellectually minded person would be like, well, I'm not sitting here crying, so maybe I'm not saved. Yeah. Um, and that's not true. There is something to being obedient um, mm -hmm. in faith after you've decided, like, okay, I'm going to follow Jesus. And now I have to make the choice, even if my emotions don't always fit with that. Yep. And so I think I kind of want to um, kind of this last question or wrap up our conversation with um, what did it look like after you realized that you had made that commitment? So whether it was a one moment thing or it was a process kind of thing, you realize now mentally I've made this commitment. What did the process afterwards look like after that commitment? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think that a lot of people have this, a lot of people outside of the church have this idea that like after you're saved, it's this like joy ride and you're just going on this roller coaster and there's never downs on the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And that is the furthest thing from true. And it's just, I think the thing that I've learned over the time of me being a Christian is that there's going to be the downs on the roller coaster. But over time, you learn how to handle those things. Like, you learn the best way um, that God wants you to handle those situations, and you learn the ways to just dive into God's Word through those situations. Um, so I would say, honestly, after my faith, things have been hard sometimes. Um, but it's in that maturing process of my faith where I've like been like, oh my goodness, I can point to this scripture and know that God is speaking me, to me through this. Um, and I think that, like I said, that little stereotype is so not true. And I hate when people are like, it's going to be perfect afterwards. Because it's really not. And we're not promised that it's going to be perfect. And so mm -hmm. I think hearing that it's like, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be awesome because you have a God who's there to help you through these things yeah. um, is such a reassurance for me. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I love, um, there's a Bible verse. I believe it's in John. I'll try to put it on the <laughs> screen. Um, where Jesus, like, fear not, for I've over. Like, in this world you will have troubles, but fear not. Thank you. John 16, 33. <laughs> there it is. It's my, it. my favorite verse. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this world you will have troubles. This is Jesus himself saying, you are going to have troubles, yep. but fear not, I've overcome the world. Yeah. And it's like, once you've made that commitment, Jesus is saying, like, still going to be tough. <laughs> yeah. But you got me. Yep. Yeah. You got me. And because you have me, it's going to be all right. Yeah. Um, that is really important for our students to hear, for sure. Yeah. And then, Rachel, what did it look like for you? Um, I think for me, it was more of a, for me, I'm a very, like, people pleaser. Like, I want everybody around me to, like, love me and, like, I want to please them. Like, if they tell me to do something, I'll do it. Like, if they need something, I'll get it for them. And, like, it's great. It's great to have it quality. But at the same time, like, it was at that moment, 
of over time after I was saved that like I'm not here to please man. I am not here to make sure that all these people who aren't Christians who look at me and are like, what is she doing? She's crazy. To be like, no, I'm here to please God. I'm here to live my life for God. I'm here to bring these people to God. Um, and so I think that was the biggest thing for me in realizing it's hard. It's really hard sometimes to be like, put that uh, lens away of like, I need all these people to like me. Because yeah, when you're a Christian, people, there's going to be a lot of people who don't like you. There's going to be a lot of people who think you're, you're, you're not, you're following something that's not right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think having that mindset of like, n not a worldly mindset yeah. um, was a big change. And it was hard. And it's something that I still struggle with to this day. But also the biggest thing was realizing that we are made for community. In that, in the aspect of we are made for community with pe with like-minded believers, um, and that's where, like I said before, when I was younger, church was just a place for me to come hang out with my friends. Church became somewhere where I would come to grow closer to God through the community that God had yeah, given me here. Too. And small groups on Wednesday nights were the biggest thing for me because it was the place where I was like, if I have a problem, if I have a question, if I have a struggle, I knew that those girls would be there for me to help me through it and not be like, why is she asking those questions? Why is she, why is she talking about this? <laughs> they would be there to be like, hey, we hear you, we see you, and we still love you, and we're here to help you do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the different perspectives, that's the word. I was trying to think of the word. <laughs> perspective, my perspective on everything completely changed. Yep. Yeah. Like it was similar, but like my perspective changed on my friends, my family, how I would go about things. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. and I think I'm sure that, I mean, for every believer, more or less, so that is what it looks like, so I, like, I would say to our students who are, like, well, I've grown up in a Christian household, and I don't know, like, if I'm saved or not, I would say, like, well, one, like, can you, like, actually, like, look at the gospel and say that you believe in that, like, does that click in your head, in your heart, mm -hmm. um, and then, like, can you notice this kind of mindset change in you like has your community and your small group in church gone from just being a place that you have fun to a place that like you're actually able to share sin and like actually filter that out like has worship moved from being something that's just like fun to like you know hang out or like I talk in the background or like and has it moved to something where like wow what a joy it is to be yeah. able to worship God like in the highs and lows like it really is yeah. this mindset shift yep. and maturing and that's something like when you, like, come to faith and the Holy Spirit, like, indwells you, like, that, that was such, like, an old-timey way of saying that. <laughs> wow, I just, like, get really getting into it. Um, but when you, like, have the Holy Spirit in you, like, you start to gain that maturity, mm -hmm. you start to gain that wisdom and that different mindset. Yeah. And, and so I'd probably say that's the biggest thing. And it's not something that happens overnight. Like, when I sat in that conference room and I'm like, I'm accepting Jesus, I wasn't like, I have all the wisdom in the world. Now. <laughs> like, it, it was such a, it was such a process. Yeah. Uh, like, there was still, I accepted Christ right before eighth grade. And there were still, like, really tough things that happened. There were still mm -hmm. days that I was questioning, like, did I make the right decision? Does yeah. God exist? Does he still love me? Um, and that's something that we probably deal with throughout adulthood, too. Yeah, like, because we're human. Because we're human. And I'm sure even as, like, we all work in ministry, right, mm -hmm. right now. Like, there's many times, even as ministry leaders, where we're like, um, wait a second. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Does God still love me? Like, is this still, you know? Yeah. And it's as you grow in maturity after you've made that faith commitment that you're able to, I think, more quickly. It's not that you don't stop asking the yeah. questions. Yeah. It's that it's more quickly you're able to be reminded of God's goodness and his mm -hmm. faithfulness and the fact that he still is who he says he is. Yeah. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. That's time. But, wow, what a good conversation, guys. So fun. Yeah, so thanks fun. for just well, being vulnerable and opening up. And no, it's vulnerability. <laughs> vulnerability. Vulnerability. I love, love the vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to keep on having more of these conversations. I think that's incredible. And I know we even get to share all of your story. Mm -hmm. um, but... Hey, small groups, if you want to hear their full story, just ask them. Yeah, I'm here. You can always <laughs> we ask love, me. We love yeah. talking about it. Talk about yeah. Talking about how Jesus changed me. Yeah, because I mean, there's so much. There's so mm -hmm. much to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, as, if I was going to end on a cliche, you know, kind of, um, your faith is like a long love letter from Jesus. And he's just, no, I don't know where I'm going. I just, <laughs> I feel like I, I, so I heard that somewhere sometime, and I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I was like, I don't know where you're going. It is, it is, like, your whole story 
is like Jesus just like loving you and caring for you and yeah. it is like this this beautiful love story that he's weaving into your life um but uh well well we really took that in a direction <laughs> and I think we're just gonna call it a wrap so that has been Couch Talks week two we'll see All right, you guys, guys again what's our famous saying here at Scottsdale students uh, uh,